Hi everyone, this is Kara with Grains and Small Places and today I wanted to bring you along on a little experiment day for me. I wanted to give you an inside edition kind of how I work on recipes and troubleshoot them and do like a test kitchen and let you see kind of behind the scenes just a little bit of how I come up with my recipes. Um, I'm not just copying and pasting things. I will find a few recipes, put them together, try them out, make some alterations while I'm doing them, and then we will make them again and make sure that they are a success. And then I will try to have other people try them to make sure they're a success. So I really wanted to show you kind of just a little bit of how we do that. And today I'm going to be doing it with some vanilla wafers. So this is a new recipe to me. I have not made these before, so you get to try it out the first time I get to try it out. And we'll go ahead and see how they turn out. And first things first, we need to get some butter out to start coming to room temperature to soften. And if they're a success, I'm going to make a second video follow-up, a bonus video about what we're going to do with those. So make sure you're subscribed, that way you'll know what we're going to be making next. So let's go ahead and get started milling our flour. <laughs> Okay, so when I started making this recipe, I went ahead and milled it to 190 grams. And I wanted to start out with the exact recipe to see what it needed for alterations. So this recipe was for just a regular all-purpose flour recipe. This was not made for fresh milled flour. I will go ahead and put a link in the description box below to the printable recipe to the what we ended up with for the recipe so that you don't end up making it wrong because I'm going to go through a bunch of different amounts and changes and things like that. So I will keep that down below. So first we're going to mill that flour. I used soft white wheat. I think spelt would be really good in these cookies as well. And then I went ahead and brought that over. You can see this beautiful fresh milled flour. And then to the flour, I went ahead and added three quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. And then mix that in with the dry ingredients, just the flour, baking powder, and salt all together. And then once my butter is softened, I'm going to use the butter and put that in my mixer. And I'm gonna add about two thirds a cup of just granulated sugar. Now some other recipes I found called for powdered sugar. I suppose you could use that, but I actually preferred using the just raw cane sugar that I have. And then here I'm gonna cream the butter and sugar. So I'm just gonna start out slow and then I'll turn it all the way up. This mixer goes up to level four. So I'm gonna turn it all the way up to start creaming the butter and sugar. The butter should start looking fluffy and lighter in color and you shouldn't really see a separation between the butter and sugar. It just kind of should look all cohesive and one. And once that's all creamed together, I'm going to add one egg. Now, everybody's eggs are a little bit different in size, so this is one thing that can change recipes a lot for a lot of people. If you have a recipe that calls for an egg, as you know, a size of egg could vary greatly in volume, so that could be one reason why recipes are always different for different people. So you may need a little more or a little less flour because an egg is part of our liquids. And I, of course, I'm going to use my homemade vanilla. <laughs> I used about a tablespoon of this vanilla extract and that should give us our vanilla-y flavor for the vanilla wafers. And I'm just going to beat the egg in with the rest of this. So while I was making these cookies, I thought about cutting all of the <laughs> parts out that, you know, didn't work out so that I could just give you the perfect recipe the first time and not have any issues. But then I thought, why not just show everyone kind of what goes on? Sometimes when I'm working these recipes, I have success the first time. And sometimes I go through many times. And sometimes it goes so wrong that I have to leave it for a while and come back to it. So I've done that with a few things, just did it, had no success, tried it again, had no success several times until I just needed a break from it. So then I will end up coming back to it. I will not let these recipes get the best of me. I will overcome them and I will find a good recipe with fresh milled flour. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in that fresh mold flour that was already mixed up with the dry ingredients. And I'm gonna mix this just briefly with the cookie paddle here. 
just starting out on one so it doesn't go flying out everywhere and then I'll turn it up just a bit until all of the dry flour is incorporated with the butter and egg mixture and then I'm going to add about a tablespoon of milk so here you can see I eyeballed it the amount of milk is going to vary for everybody you just want to keep an eye on your dough I would say that you may need a little more or a little less of the milk and you definitely anytime you're making cookies or creaming things or anything you definitely want to make sure that you are scraping down the sides as you can see there was still some dry flour in there that wasn't incorporated at all so yes we definitely want to scrape down our sides okay and as i'm looking at this and mixing this up i'm just noticing this this looks really wet i feel what's going through my mind is should i add more flour should I try this this recipe? Is it supposed to be a wet dough? I really didn't know at this point. So I figured the only way to know for sure was to bake it. And then I would know the results. So I went ahead and started scooping out the cookie dough. And you know, vanilla wafers are a pretty small cookie, so I didn't want to use my big cookie scoop. I don't have a little cookie scoop. If, you, if I did, that's probably what I would use here. So I started with my, I guess, tablespoons of my table, you know, table dinnerware spoons and started shaping these into little balls. And as I'm shaping them, I'm noticing this is very sticky dough. I'm not sure. Let's try to get our hands in it. So I wanted to put my hands in the dough and feel what it looked like so I knew what consistency and what texture I was looking at here. And as you can see, it makes a giant mess. I throw it back in and realize I'm just gonna bake this one at 350 degrees, which is what the recipe calls for. So I baked the one off so I knew what to do. While baking that one off, I learned they were way too big so I used my little teaspoons and also I added more flour. So I went back, I milled a little bit more flour and I ended up with about 240 grams of soft white wheat that I milled and I used my smaller teaspoons and I decided to make these just little balls here. Now, as you can see, it's still sticky, but now it's more of a cookie dough consistency. It's not super wet to where it's sticking to everything and, and just won't come off. So I went ahead and made a tray of this size cookies to bake at 350 degrees. One other alteration I decided to do with this cookie dough after I had baked that one off and added some more flour was to refrigerate my cookie dough just for a little bit. So I popped the cookie dough in the refrigerator while that first one was baking. And I feel like that gave me a lot better results. So that also helps the fresh milk flour to absorb some of that liquid and start softening up. And I think that that made a big difference in this recipe as well. So when we tasted that one cookie that I baked at the first time, it tasted amazing, but it did not get quite crispy which that's how, what made me realize let's make them a little bit smaller so I used my smaller spoons here as you can see and this recipe said to bake for 12 to 14 minutes so I'm getting my fingers wet here and just pushing down the tops because I noticed they did not flatten out when I baked that first one as much as I thought they would so I'm just pushing down the tops kind of shaping them a little bit better um, when I get my hands wet, the dough doesn't stick to my hands at all. It ends up being nice, mixing, making it nice and easy to work with. Okay, so while I was baking these, I noticed that they still were not getting the browning effect that I really wanted these to have. So I decided let's bake this batch at 375 degrees for that same 12 to 14 minutes. And I went ahead, I liked the size of these vanilla wafers, so I continued to use the smaller spoon. I did not feel that I needed to add any more flour. At this point, I really, I thought the dough, the flavor, everything was good for these cookies. I just didn't like, I guess, the coloring. And you can see, I'll show you here later, that they were a little bit lumpy I guess <laughs> would be the best way to describe it so I went ahead and altered a little bit more and I'll show you what I do for that issue coming up again I like the idea of getting water on my fingers to push the tops down I pushed them a little bit further down this time and just helped a little bit with their shape to see if I could make them look a little bit more 
vanilla wafery. <laughs> if that's even a word. As I'm doing this, I'm filling them with my hands. I'm noticing that some are bigger than others, so I'm just kind of adding a little bit to the dough on the ones that I feel like are a little bit smaller, so they bake more evenly. Okay, so here's that second batch. As you can see, it was they were very light in color. I baked them longer than what it called for. I didn't want them to dry out, so that's why I decided to increase the temperature on the oven this next time. Okay, so this I'm going to show you was the next batch. As you can see, they're a little bit darker in color and I really like that, but the shape of them was still bothering me. <laughs> Maybe it's the perfectionist coming out in me. I don't really know what it is, but I, they taste great. They taste just like a vanilla wafer. My family really approved of them, but I wanted a little bit of a prettier finish. So I decided for this last bit of my dough that I would go ahead and wet my hands completely and just roll the dough balls out instead of trying to use the spoons and not get my hands dirty. Let's just get my hands dirty, roll it in a perfect ball. I flattened them and then I laid them on the tray. I wanted to see if this would affect how they baked and what they look like in the end product. And I'll show you what they look like after these are done baking. So the trick here was to keep my hands wet. I did have to run them under the water a couple times. That way the dough didn't get so sticky and all over my hands and make a big mess. But you can see this is much easier to work with when, than that very first round that I had. <laughs> so that one was pretty messy. So this gave me a lot better results. And again, the printable recipe down below will have all of the alterations, the correct amounts and the directions that we did that ended up giving us the best results. And I'm going to go ahead and bake these at the higher temperature, the 375. These have been shaped. The dough was refrigerated. I added more flour and I'm going to bake them for the 12 to 14 minutes at that little bit of a higher temperature. And I'll let you see what they look like when they come out. Okay, look at these guys. I really like the shape of them. I like the texture of them. They browned nicely. They have a little crisp in them once they cooled off. I was so pleased with these. They earned the thumbs up. So I guess guys, bottom line is don't be afraid to try out a new recipe. You may have to alter it a little bit, but it's kind of fun in the process and you end up with something delicious. Thanks for following along with me as we made these delicious vanilla wafers. I cannot wait to show you what we're going to do with them next. So make sure you're subscribed. That way you know when we put out the next video what we're going to make with these. I bet you you have a pretty good guess. Don't forget to check out my blog at grainsandsmallplaces.net where you can find this recipe and a whole bunch of other recipes. And thank you for stopping by Grains and Small Places. Goodbye. Bye.